his uh, 30th birthday, and he apparently would rather spend that doing housework than hanging out with all you nice people. Um, so welcome to ATU New Tech. Um, if you haven't uh, been here before, well, how many people have been here to an ATU New Tech before, or any New Tech? That's the other way around. Right. How many are new? Okay, how many are new? There you go. All right, that was like the option. Um, so, uh, my name is Brandon. Uh, I work with Zach at Oler. Um, uh, this, uh, normally we have five presenters, there's only four today, but each presenter uh, will have five minutes to give you a pitch, and then there will be a five minute Q&A session afterwards. Um, so it goes pretty fast. Um, there will be an opportunity for uh, community announcements between presenters, so if you have anything uh, interesting going on in the community, think about it and uh, get ready to announce uh, between um, speakers. Um, yep, yeah, that's about it, I think. Did I forget anything? No. All right. You, you can announce the sponsors later. Yeah, we're doing sponsors between the two. First right. two. Um, so our first speaker is uh, Justine Chu from Pro Up, and I will let her take over. All right, good evening. My name is Justine Shu, and I am the CEO and co-founder of ProUp. I've worked as a high school counselor in Detroit for the past four years, along with my co-founders, Miles Morgan and Justin Cook, who are longtime advisors and advocates for Detroit youth. What united us as a team was not only our shared vision, but our shared experiences as counselors and advisors to high school students. See, through our time advising, all of us have encountered students like Tanisha. Tanisha was a student of mine at Cody High School in Detroit. And like a lot of my kids, she was fighting the odds. <coughs> Growing up, she never lived with her biological parents. Her older brother was in prison, and most of her friends and family had either dropped out of school or were in the streets. But Tanisha wanted to be different. Tanisha wanted to be the first in her family to go to college. The only problem was she didn't know exactly what she wanted to do or how she was going to get there. So that's when she came to me. And like so many of my students, she relied almost exclusively on her teachers and on her counselors for information about what types of opportunities were out there. So I scoured my networks searched through 9,000 emails in my inbox, went through phone calls, flyers, and finally, I found two opportunities that I knew would be a good fit. The first was Camp Moxie, a girls' leadership and empowerment camp. And the second was the Accounting Career Awareness Program at Wayne State. Through these programs, Tanisha met role models to guide and advise her discovered that accounting was her dream career and won the scholarship that enabled her to be the first in her family to go to college. The problem for me is that Tanisha's just one of over 300 students that I serve on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, the average high school counselor in the state of Michigan serves 362 students. And the reality is, we simply have too many students and too many other responsibilities to be able to connect every high school student to a meaningful opportunity. The fact is, there just isn't a robust infrastructure in most public schools to be able to connect every student to the types of real world opportunities like Tanisha discovered that help them identify what they love to do and discover how to do it well. And the same pain was shared by over 150 students, educators, and opportunity-providing organizations that we've interviewed over the past six months. But ProUp is here to change that. ProUp is a web and mobile application that delivers a custom feed of educational and career opportunities directly to students based upon their interests. Opportunities like summer programs, internships, mentoring groups, even jobs. 
The way it works is that students create a profile and indicate their skills, interests, and career goals. And then they'll receive a customized feed of opportunities that match the credentials in their profile. Meanwhile, opportunity providing organizations like colleges, businesses, and even youth development programs have their own interface, which allows them to post opportunities, label them with certain criteria, and then they'll receive automated, targeted recruitment for each opportunity they post through our custom matching system. They'll also get to access a huge national database of talented high school youth that are filterable by a variety of search criteria. And finally, for counselors and educators, we'll have our own interface, which allows us to see what our students are doing in real time through a student activity feed and run custom reports so we can monitor our students' engagement with extracurricular opportunities. Now, while there are other college and career readiness apps out there, like Navion and Career Cruiser, none of them delivers what was identified by students as the single most important benefit, and this was a custom feed of real-world opportunities. Programs like Navion and Career Cruiser connect students to theoretical information, but not information about real opportunities that are out there today. And while there are data databases like internships.com, these aggregators have very limited search criteria and don't provide people with a custom feed. Like other multi-sided platforms, we have multiple user segments, but our primary payers are opportunity-providing organizations like businesses, nonprofits, and post-secondary institutions. We've already identified about 10 high schools in Detroit to pilot our beta with in the fall of 2015, and the state of Michigan has expressed interest in distributing our program through their Career Jumpstart program. As for our next steps, again, we plan to launch our public beta in the fall of 2015. And what you can do to help are connect us with other opportunities that you're aware of in the community, and we're also in search of technical talent. We're looking for a technical co-founder and talented developers that can join our team. Through PROA, we hope to connect every student, like Tanisha, to the types of opportunities that they need to discover what it is they love to do and learn how to do it well. Thank you. So um, when I was in high school, I don't think I knew what I wanted to do. I, I did, definitely didn't know that I wanted to do what I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you asked me to fill out a list of you know, things I was interested in, um, I'm not sure how good I would have been, actually, at targeting myself um, and associating myself with the right opportunity. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, from a product standpoint, is there anything that you think you can do to make sure that people who have you know, the least experience um, in the range of you know professional software or databases can get the right match, or is it just going to be a stream of a million things that I can't? Speak? Yeah, so there's I guess there's three different things I can say to that. That's a great point, and that's actually part of the reason we're building the product. Because to be to be honest with you, there's limits to what a matching algorithm can do. At the end of the day, you kind of have to experience something for yourself to discover what it is you actually really want to do and whether something is for you. So I would say that the first way in which we're really trying to address that is by saying, you know what, you might not get your interest right the first time, but at least when you go out and participate in some type of real world opportunity and then you realize it's not for you, you haven't invested like $23,000 a year in your college tuition you know, to make that decision. Um, the second thing is that we're trying to be as empirical as possible. So there are lots of research-based um, tests out there that can match people to you know, sort of career paths or skill sets based upon different aspects of their psychological profile. And so long term, we're actually looking to build in an assessment as opposed to just like a self-reporting interest group categorization where people can take a test if they're really not sure what it is they're interested in and then it will give them a list of suggested career paths. And then the last part was sort of about this information overload phenomenon, right? Like what happens if you put like four different things you're interested in and then you're getting bombarded with, you know, 12 things a day. And I think that, you know, to address that, there's way in which, in which we can, on the development sort of back end, do a timed release of information. So we can say, okay, we're going to limit how many opportunities 
that we distribute to users over set intervals so that they're not getting too much or if like five organizations decide to post all their opportunities at one time, it's going to be phased to the user so they don't you know, get overloaded with the information. Okay. Yes? Yeah, so given that it's a web and mobile app uh, targeted at underprivileged youth, uh, do you see any issues with like uh, accessibility and like the digital divide, like access to the, the actual website? Or, yeah, uh, that's a phones? great question. The reason that we chose a, a mobile platform is because the majority of the students we work with don't have um, internet and computers at home. But 80% of our students and actually 80% of people living in poverty do have smartphones. So we felt that the best way to bridge the digital divide was to get on a platform that was the most universally accessible. And while it's not fully universal, it is something that almost everybody is using or is capable of using. Um, the second thing uh, I'll say to that is that um, you're, there is a degree to which uh, our app is especially hopeful or optimistic about helping underprivileged youth access opportunities, but we're really designing it as a platform for anyone, anywhere, because we believe that everybody, you know, every high school student can benefit from this, regardless of whether they're underprivileged or not. It's just that the problems of underexposure are especially salient for underprivileged youth. Um, yeah. What are your economics? It's like our financial Cash model. flow. Yeah, sure, sure. So um, we haven't actually started you know, selling our, our product yet. So everything is just a hypothetical at this point, a financial model is all assumptions. But basically, we're um, projecting that we're going to charge about 7000 a year maximum as an annual subscription fee to, say, post-secondary institutions for a site-wide license. So for example, the University of Michigan can say, OK, all of our summer programs are going to go out through Pro-Op. 7,000 a year, and at the very minimum, it's going to be 250 because we're tailoring the uh, annual subscription charge to an organization's size. So we're looking at, based on our projections, just in southeastern Michigan alone, um, we've of course had to estimate how many different organizations provide opportunities, but based on our estimates and then using the NAICS database, we are looking at maybe about 25 million, um, you know, for if we're able to capture um, our target sort of beachhead market in just southeastern Michigan for the first year. Um, but like I said, like most financial models at this stage, it's all assumptions. <laughs> um, yeah. Who's your primary customer? So our primary customers are opportunity providing organizations. Should I stop? Go ahead and answer. Okay. Um, Post secondary institutions that provide you know, enrichment programs for high school students businesses that are providing internships and jobs for high school students, and then the very wide array of youth development organizations that provide different enrichment programs for high school students. We've chosen them because they already have a pain, which is that they need to recruit students for their programs, and they already have existing solutions. Like we were told by one summer program um, at actually U of M that they spend $100,000 a year alone on outreach and recruitment and still can't find enough students to fill their program. So that's why, you so know, you want a piece of we want a piece of that $100,000. That's correct. Right. Sorry, um, How's your thing being? Will you hang yeah. around after? Yeah, I'll hang around after. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. So I am going to steal the first break to thank our sponsors. Um, the first sponsor I would like to thank is uh, the University of Michigan Law School, who lets us use this room after the business school kicked us out. Um, and uh, also, um, I'd like to thank uh, Roger and R2 Weave for doing all the video stuff. Um, that's awesome. Uh, if you don't know, you can catch a live stream and recording. So, um, a2 Geeks events like this one and others. Um, and speaking of A2 Geeks, they're our community sponsor, so um, thanks to A2 Geeks, RTV, and the law school. All right, you're on here, right? Go ahead. There we go. Good, thanks. Uh, just a quick question How many people are military vets here? One, two, three. 
Okay, so military vets make up 3% of the Ann Arbor population, so it's about 100 people. We have a perfect sample size, thank you. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm uh, Reed Bennett. I'm the CEO and founder, uh, glorified unemployed uh, person at uh, Valor Villages USA. And uh, let me start from the end and go backwards, hopefully quickly. There's a thing called Ginny Mae Mortgage Bank Securities, which is a $5.7 trillion asset class, of which you and I, the taxpayer, backs up the investors 100%. The, there are 356 securitizers pre-approved to put loans into, those, into that asset class. And then there are two types of loans that go in there. One is Federal Housing Administration, which is 100% guaranteed to the lender, and the second is the Veterans Administration Loan Guarantee to buy a house, which is 25% uh, guaranteed to the lender. So now I'm a former Marine, well actually we're exceeding the population because I'm a vet too, I'm a C former Marine Corps Infantry Officer. Hoorah! Thank you. <laughs> I'm guessing you're a Marine. But, uh, and we're 24.2 million Americans, actually. In the real world, other than Ann Arbor, as much as I love it, we make up 7% of the U.S. population and 10% of the adult population. Every one of us, and I want to know if you guys know this, every one of us has a no money down buying power to be a resident landlord in a four unit income producing property of up to, in Michigan that is, $802,000 no money down each. Does that, do any of you three know that you could use your VA loan guarantee to be a resident landlord and have three renters paying, subsidizing your living costs and paying down your mortgage? Zero out of three. So, you know, don't feel bad. The, the 0.15% of us know that which means 35,000 Americans, and nobody has productized the fact that there's 24 million Americans on this side with $27 trillion of untapped buying power, not that you're gonna get the whole market, and a $5.7 trillion market on the other side. And that's what I intend to do, is to be in the middle of that, to invent it, facilitate it, and of course, being an MBA, dominate it and crush it into oblivion, right? <laughs> So how do we do that? I'm going to skip through some slides. You'd be glad to know, especially some of my mentors here who say, you go on too long. So I've got two basic phases, A and B. A has to do with a website. Phase A1 is to create a Zillow.com for the existing 5.4 million, and I'll say two to seven units here, but it's 3.8 million of them are in the two to four unit range. Phase A2 is to facilitate new build and renovation build a suit. Phase A3 is to facilitate crowd buying. So we go with a thousand vets into Detroit and we say, what are you going to give us? Because we're coming with $800 million of buying power and we're going to bring on-site security. Phase B is to become a public hybrid mortgage equity REIT doing construction loans, equity investing, commercial mortgage making, but this is the big kahuna, creating, holding, trading, and selling these Ginny May mortgage-backed securities. For the broker that matches up with the, with the, 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 uh, the lender, you get 50% of four to six dollars for every hundred dollars alone. So again, I'm hoping uh, some of your eyes are like widening like I have, and this is why I'm really interested in it. So 50% of four to six dollars for every hundred dollars alone, going into a $5.7 trillion market that rotates probably once every three years. That's my business model. Thank you. You don't get to ask questions. I'm part of the audience. Oh my God. I want to hear. Oh yeah, please. Then I promised Richard, who's my mentor here, along with Dick over here who's helping me. One, you've never heard about it, these three vets, right? Right. Two, would you be interested just at a basic of hearing more? If somebody came said, oh, it's not, 
Said, you don't get to lead this, Steve. Oh, wait a minute. This will be a scientific experiment. He gets to lead the questioning. Of you four, how many think they would go for it? Sounds like an awesome opportunity. Two. Yeah. How many want to learn more about it? Well, that, yeah, yeah. I want to learn more. Okay, about, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, the first quest, that's why I didn't want to ask that. Do you want to learn more about it? Yeah, everybody that wants that to learn question? more about it. My second question I wanted to know how many, how many of you are 70% of the way to, to, to going for it? Give me a little love, Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Sure. It's called knowing your customer. So fifty. Thank you. He's been trying to shove that down my throat ever since we we met. So fifty percent of twenty-four million Americans that have thirty-five percent higher per capita than the average American. Here's why. Go ahead, please. For me, here's why. Is um, you threw a lot of numbers out verbally. I couldn't process them fast enough. So it sounds interesting. It sounds compelling. It doesn't absorb into my brain as something that I truly understand yet. And so. So I, I wouldn't be able to go farther no, and that say. That was as simple as I said. Would you go to a Zillow.com website to learn more? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I intend to do. Put up a Zillow.com type website for this market niche. And sir, so it would seem that the entrepreneurial spirit issue is the crossover that you really have to figure out. And if you have part of your phase A, as being the management team to be able to put the pieces together so you can access those who qualify and the management skills of putting it together, you now have the linkage that you need to build this robust structure. It's a marketplace, basically, right? And would you agree with me it's a marketplace? Well, you have to get the vets who, don't, who are not entrepreneurially inclined to say, okay, if someone else can do the hard work for me, get a management fee, but I can access the money because I'm a vet, I think you've got them. Well, Zillow doesn't do that. Basically, they get advertising revenues, right? Broker subscriptions and loan referral fees. And that's, so I, if I'm gonna be Zillow, I actually don't, I, I mean, greedy as it may be, I don't want to be held up by the kind of Zillow, not very exciting business model and not making much money. I do like Zillow because they've only got 200 million of revenue and they got a $4 billion market cap on without kind of the secret sauce. Does that make sense? I, I, I'm on a different plane. I think that if you don't have the robustness of bringing in the investment power of not so willing entrepreneur vets into your marketplace, you're not going to be as robust as you need to be. So I agree with you, and what I would say to you is we are, in certain respects, exactly like every other American, except we have up to a no money down, 802,000 bucks. So unfortunately, the American way is other people's money to get rich. So now what percentage of 24 million Americans would take that, take that jump? And this is Richard's point exactly. I don't know. I think with, I think it's going to be a big amount, and even a small amount of a huge market is a big amount. And I'm trying to raise so funds to do so. So, so by the way, uh, just this this last weekend, I was uh, I was at an event called Patriot Boot Camp. It's exactly for appealing to uh, entrepreneurial vets. Um, it's it's great. It's put on by TechStars. It's got amazing. Uh, set of people there, um, amazing mentors, and uh, everyone there is an entrepreneurial vet, so they're going to be doing more of them around, so um, really you should check it out. So I got a no to a $15 million ask today, but it was a pretty good no, and I got pretty far along with these people. So I think this is, you know, not so humbly said, Google. I think this is like what Google looked like and nobody would invest in because it just sounded crazy. But there, thank you. Don't mean to pick on you. I'm, I'm almost little, done, sorry, six right. seconds. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. Uh, are you, you gonna build something that is Zillow-like or are you going to work with Zillow and have some, some uh, kind of connection with them? So I talked to the head of mortgages for Zillow because everybody said, why doesn't Zillow uh, steal this? 
And she said, like I thought they'd say, we're completely focused on single family. And you know, I'm not exactly Marine Corps shy. I'm like, when I talked to her, I said, buy me now or buy me later. And she said, ha ha ha. And then, yeah. and then, uh, and then but what I'm saying is, it's whatever a two to four unit market niche needs to look like in a Zillow context. Thank you guys. Thanks. Um, while we get Amanda set up here, if anyone has any community announcements, uh, events, if you're hiring, etc., now would be the time. Hi, I'm Sam. Uh, I'm from the design team at a company called Farmwalks here. We make uh, agriculture platform. Uh, we connect like robots and farmers, and we use satellite data to do really cool things to help people make decisions about their crops. Um, a, we are hiring, we're looking for designers. Join uh, the two of us, engineers, salespeople, marketing people, a lot of stuff. So go to farmlogs.com slash jobs. Also, uh, we are hosting a design event next week on Tuesday at the Farmlogs office with happy hour afterwards at uh, Bar Brown Cart. Um, if you are a designer or an aspiring designer and you're interested in just getting in touch with the Ann Arbor design scene, come see me afterwards. Uh, we'd love to join us. Thanks. Yeah. I'm Scott. Uh, I just announced the uh, A2 Drink Up event, actually, that's uh, going to be a very special one this time. Uh, the A2 Drink Up events, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, this is kind of a presentational style event. The Drink Up events is uh, uh, where we drink a lot of beer, basically, and we talk <laughs> on entrepreneurial stuff. So I just announced it on the A2 New Tech page. It's going to be at the Tech Brewery this time. It's going to be a special one. So uh, sign up, uh, you know, join it, and uh, come to the event. Uh, other than that, um, I run Coffee House Coders. We have events. Uh, I think a couple weeks from now. If you want to learn how to code, we'd be glad to help you. Thanks. Hi, my name is Mike. I work for Optimi, and uh, we are a staffing partner to uh, companies in Ann Arbor and Detroit. One of our clients uh, here in Ann Arbor is a startup in the logistics space working on mobile applications. They have need for a JavaScript uh, and Angular developer. So if anybody's interested or knows somebody who would be a good fit, it's a full-time role and a uh, very urgent need for them. A position? Excuse me? A? <laughs> yes, very much so paid. Okay. Contract to hire opportunity and uh, something that uh, has a lot of potential for uh, the right person. Thank you. Okay, there'll be another, there'll be another one after this presentation. So uh, I'm going to let Amanda Chaco with Seamless give her talk. Hello everybody, my name is Amanda Chaco. I am actually with Start Garden, but I'm also the director of Seamless, which is a new IoT accelerator that we just launched in Grand Rapids. I'm here to tell you about that tonight. So Seamless is actually a collaboration of a number of organizations. Um, we have Steelcase, as many of you may know, is Office Furniture, Amway Corporation, Corsia is a global um, interior automotive company. They're actually based in France, but their innovation team is headquartered in Holland, Michigan. Priority Health, Meyer, and Spectrum Health. And Start Garden. Start Garden, for those of you who are not familiar, we're a venture capital fund in Grand Rapids. We're about three years old. Um, we support very early stage ideas, and so far in three years we have funded uh, 200 ideas, and we have about 50 companies in our portfolio. And prior to that, we ran a, an accelerator called Momentum for uh, three years prior to that. So that's what we're bringing to the table. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Seamless, how it came about, uh, why we're excited about it, and about the program. But before I do that, uh, IoT, the Internet of Things, is a buzzword these days, and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So for the purposes of what Seamless is, I found the definition on Wikipedia, which <coughs> is, um, says it well. The Internet of Things, a network of physical objects or things embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and connectivity to enable it to achieve greater value and service by exchanging data with the manufacturer, operator, and or other connected devices. 
So the unique thing about uh, Seamless is we are actually bringing the startup world and the enterprise world together to run one cohesive program. This is usually not done. Um, startups and enterprises are very, very different beasts. Startups, you know, are known to be very quick, fail fast, and on the other hand, enterprises are known to be very slow. You know, and then with startups, what we've um, heard from them is that they see enterprises as something to disrupt, and the enterprises see startups as something either to acquire or crush. But I think they're coming around um, nowadays, so we're going to bring them together. The startups need access to channels, domain expertise, market knowledge, and customer knowledge, which Enterprises, especially the ones that we're working with, have very, very deep market cha um, channels and global scales that they can tap into. And then the enterprises, they need more lightweight experiments and the ability to do more high volume um, and low risk trial and error learning and to explore outside of their core. Um, enterprises are known to be able to be really good at incremental innovation, but when it comes to looking at anything outside that's more disruptive, it's been more of a challenge. But what they do share is customer, the end user of the products that they are developing. So what if we got them together to make people's lives more better? To work more better. Mm -hmm. Okay, English. So when you think about the life of yourself or a person and how you navigate your world, you know, whether you're shopping, you have medical needs, products, what you're wearing, your home, your car, at work, how can we help to make these experiences more seamless, more connected, and make people's lives better? So that's why we're launching the Seamless Accelerator, to discover ways that the physical and digital worlds converge to make people's lives better. So when you think of the Internet of Things, where better to find the things than Michigan? That's what we do best. Michigan is known for making things. And I don't know any other place that has the density of global enterprises that we have, ones that are willing to collaborate and work together, that are willing to take risks and open their doors to support startups. Um, a lot of communities that are thinking about their, their ecosystems, their startup ecosystems, are really trying to you know, emulate Silicon Valley and Boulder, and that's not an easy thing to do. So really taking a look at our own, is it five minutes already? Holy cow. All right. So yeah, so we make things in Michigan, um, and the Sim Accelerator is going to open their doors, looking for companies that are um, need commercialization partners in smart home, transportation, healthcare, retail environment, and innovative workplaces. So it can come from anywhere, be at any stage. Um, the enterprises are opening their doors to start to receive access to their global supply chains, their market channels, their market expertise. They could be strategic investors, potential customers, um, also get some seed capital. We have over 50 mentors from both inside the corporations and outside the corporations, and also 20 service provider companies that are giving um, $400,000 in in-kind services to the accelerator from engineering and um, technology development, design, marketing, finance, law, you name it. The applications are open now. The first uh, accelerator starts in September, and we'll be running two accelerators a year for the next three years. And the next one will be in the spring. Thanks. People that, um, companies that want to come to the accelerator need to be in Grand Rapids, or at least two people from their team, um, for the 12 weeks, but they are welcome to go to wherever is going to help their company grow after that. So we're not, we're not an economic development organization looking to steal people and create jobs just in West Michigan. We're, we're looking globally for companies right now, so.
Um, All the IP belongs to the startups. The startups are their own, you know, corporation, LLC, however they're set up. The um, there's going to be an investment vehicle set up for each accelerator, where the company, the startups, and um, I mean the corporate people and Startup Garden are going to do the initial seed investments. Each um, enterprise will have a stake in all of the companies, but we might probably just resonate with one or two. Um, but they, the companies own all the IP at that point, unless there's some arrangements made later. Okay. Yeah, actually, so that, that was my question was, uh, does, does Start Garden do an investment or do they just facilitate other investments? Um, it, it, do, they, do they have a note that... Uh, yeah, so we, Start Garden is a venture capital fund, okay. but we're setting up a different vehicle right now so the um, enterprises can invest in that investment vehicle. So, okay, so, oh, well, I guess, I, maybe I, I, guess I asked what Start Garden. Seamless is the name of the okay. accelerator. So okay. actually, Start Garden that, is part of the coalition. So, and does anyone who is accepted into the accelerator, do they, is, is there an automatic investment, much like there is with, say, like a Y Combinator? Yep, or, it's or, a $20,000 convertible note. Okay. With what cap? Um, I think, don't quote me, $400,000 cap at 6%. Okay. But if companies come in, we're looking at any stage, so you could have, already have market traction, um, investment, we realize that those companies might want to negotiate those terms, and depending on the company, you, we want um, to do that. I didn't understand the part about um, about the the the, the, pro, the, the cross ownership. Uh, can you? Did, cross ownership. Is, I, I, you said that each company has a piece of. So, they're investing in the seamless fund, which then. They will all be investors, just as if, you so know. you're talking about the, they're basically the LPs of the seed. Right, fund. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I deal with IoT all the time, and I deal with Intel, Qualcomm, Broadcom on a weekly basis. So, I mean, you, you've got to be going after a vertical market here at the accelerator. Because saying that you, you don't invest in IoT startups is like saying you invest in books, right? Like, I mean, where, where specifically are you targeting an IoT? Well, specifically in smart home, transportation, healthcare, retail, um, and workplaces. And so one example would be, you know, Meyer stores, they want to, you know, say, um, use their store as a device where they might have beacons up so that you can understand where the traffic flow is, or be able to communicate with their customers better, make their sh shopping experience better, and be able to share data back with them, be able to perhaps give them coupons in real time when they're on an aisle. I mean, think about Forcea, they talk about, you know, your seat as a device. You know, if it's monitoring, say, your, your vital signs, and then you go to work and you sit in your chair and it's monitoring your vital signs and you go home or wherever else you are. So when you go to the doctor, instead of just that, that one you know, test that they're taking at that time, they have more of a history of your health. Um, priority Health and Spectrum Health want to be able to help um, develop more remote care and help um, patients be able to make better decisions upon where they're getting their health care and be able to navigate the craziness of what well, all of these companies, these are their markets, so they have, you know, if, if what you're asking is do you have well, a certain I mean, do you guys currently have startups that you, you are incubating? Seamless is new. Start Garden, we have 50 um, companies in our portfolio. Okay. See, this is a new accelerator, but all of these partners have deep, deep channels in all these markets. I'll be around if anybody has questions and you could email me at Amanda at Seamless Accelerator. Thanks. Um, so I think there were some announcements that didn't make the cut. 
Hi, I'm Jim. I uh, co-organize the Ann Arbor Google Developers Group. We are going together with the Detroit chapter to sponsor a Michigan Dev Fest on May 9th in downtown Detroit. There's going to be two tracks, an Android track and a web cloud track with several different topics from Gradle to AngularJS. So if you have interest, uh, go to michigandevfest.com and I put the link on the media page. Another hiring announcement, uh, Tori Consulting, which is an Ann Arbor and Charlotte-based consulting firm, is hiring consultants, developers, uh, part-time, full-time, so if anyone has any consulting experience or wants to kind of test it out, uh, I'll post on the meetup site or I'll be around after, but we're hiring a lot of people quickly, so let me know. Uh, I'm John Schoer. electronic health records for uh, summer camps, schools, and uh, daycare centers. Um, and we're currently looking for front-end and uh, back-end developers. So if you're interested, talk to me after. All right, and I have two announcements. One of them is that um, I work for Olark, and we are hiring. Um, we're hiring customer service people, uh, and we're hiring Python backend people. So you can go to olek.com slash jobs and check that out. Um, and also, uh, we usually go to Pizza House after this. If anyone is interested in eating pizza and talking more, um, it's just around the corner. I'm sure you can find it. Um, and if there's no other announcements, all right, um, this is Graham Evans. Uh, from, I assume Relay Foods, this is meal planning on huh? Well, it's a little bit of both. All right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Graham Evans. I'm the SVP of new products at Relay Foods. Uh, we are the healthy online grocery store. And I'm here to talk today a little bit about Relay, but mostly about a startup that I've been building inside Relay called Meal Planning by Relay Foods. And uh, we just launched our product uh, in late March and wanted to talk about that as well as some of the learnings that we've gotten in the, uh, the build process. So what is Relay? Relay is an e-commerce grocer. We focus on local and organic food. Um, all the typicals, people can shop anywhere, anytime from devices. We deliver the next day and customers can pick up for free. So that's one of our value propositions. You can see one of our lovely pickup site trucks here that go to community centers and schools and office parks. And we really believe we've solved the last mile dilemma, which has plagued a lot of online grocers historically through home delivery. We do offer home delivery for a fee, but about 80% of our, uh, our uh, deliveries go through these pickup site trucks. And we're ultimately going after the $630 billion grocery market, along with a lot of other players. So we've been doing this for a while. It's pretty exciting to see the, the space heating up now. Um, finally, the scarecrow of web van has passed. So we currently serve Maryland down through North Carolina. Uh, we founded in Charlottesville, Virginia. And we're good at a, a number of things, but two things that we're known for, one is our front end UX. Um, I just encourage you to go check out the website, reallyfoods.com. Um, gorgeous photos, great stories, um, a, a beautiful intuitive interface. Um, it's really best in class. I won't talk about the specific uh, features that you can read about. The other thing that we're really good at is customer service. We've got a net promoter score of 78%, which is better than Amazon, Apple, or any other grocer on the planet. So that's something we're pretty proud of. And it's all stacked up to mean that we've grown. And since 2009, you can see we've done pretty well. You can see that we're continuing to ramp as we go. And uh, that brings us to meal planning. So last fall, uh, we looked around. We saw a lot going on in the space of meal kits and meal planning. Blue Apron and Plated were getting a lot of investment. We decided to do an experiment on our blog, and customers loved it. They started using, using the meal planning very lo-fi service that we had there. So I took it, took that project on, and I've been building a startup within the company since. We launched a beta in January, and then went public on March 24th, and there it is. You can go check it out yourself at relayfoods.com slash meals if you like. Uh, and we really believe this is a paradigm shift uh, in the way that people shop for groceries. We think one of the things that's held online grocery back for a long time is that's the same as format as, uh, as retail, walking down aisles. 
And we believe that what you can do with uh, an online e-commerce format is totally reshuffle the way people shop for groceries and bring it back to the original intent, which is to make a meal. So we say, shop meals, not aisles, which we've trademarked, by the way. Um, and so, what are, what's our value prop? One, you can plan and shop a week's worth of meals in 15 minutes. That's a process that takes two separate hour-long uh, processes for most families, and now it's 15 minutes and done at the same time. Um, we focus on quick, seasonal, and affordable meals, and we automatically deduplicate those meals. So if two meals call for an onion, or half an onion, you're going to only get one onion in your cart. So it's all kind of done in the background and made really seamless for you. Um, so we learned really early on that flexibility and choice was critical. This is one of the big things that's held Blue Apron and Plated back in our estimation, in part because customers tell us this, and when they leave Blue Apron and come use our service. Um, and what that means is that we give full control to customers over the number of meals they shop, which meals they actually shop, and every single ingredient that, that is a part of all of those meals. You can get a local ingredient, you can get an organic ingredient, you can get a conventional ingredient. It's all up to you as a customer. And no one else is doing this. In addition, we personalize it. So if you're shopping in Richmond, you're going to see local uh, products local to Richmond, Virginia. If you're in DC, you can see products local to DC. And we can also, we know your search history, another beautiful thing about e-commerce, and we can pre-select items that you've already purchased as the primary ingredient for your meal plan. So we can get to know you and tailor it to you that way. Um, let's see here. So when you give people all that choice, you need to make it both really fun and really simple. And so I'm going to demonstrate the fun part right here. This is a little video we made. So you can shop uh, any of our 200 curated meals that's on the site at any point, mix and match, build your own meal plan from the ground up. Or you can go to any recipe site in the world, really. This one's Martha Stewart. Um, and you can use our handy Chrome extension. And oh, man. Yeah. You can use our Chrome extension to load meals uh, from anywhere on the web into meal planning, and then that gets uh, plugged in with your ingredients, and you shop as you go. So I'll, I'll have to pause that. You can keep that running and do questions if you want. Okay, well, it, it goes on a little bit. You'll see the whole process. Now you're on there. You can choose which ingredients you want. You can deselect the black pepper because you've already got that in your cart. We'll remember that selection so you don't have to do that every time. Um, and, and then you can see that the deduplication, you know, multiple meals for every single ingredient in your cart. So we also, beyond giving you infinite selection, we give it, we make it really simple. We have a meal plan every week that's designed by a registered dietitian. There are five meals per week, looks something like this, um, and a lot of people shop that. And if you do that, it takes you two or three minutes to do all your grocery shopping for the week rather than 15. You just click an ad. It's our version of Blue Apron, but we think it's a lot better because it's your products. Uh, according to your preferences. All right, we gotta do. Yeah, so $48 per serving and it's free. We'll, we'll go into learnings if you want afterwards. So, questions? So, when I go to Whole Foods, I get my daily exercise of walking and all that stuff. <laughs> and I get to meet people. Yeah. And I maybe even cook my own food. Well, you're still cooking your own food here. Can't help you with the exercise. But community-wise, one of the reasons we love pickup what sites... What about tasting cheese? What's that? <laughs> uh, at the pickup locations, one of the benefits is that uh, they're based in neighborhoods, so you're actually picking up with people in your neighborhood. You still get the great social interaction, and you have the same person serving you every week. So there's actually, they get to know you, they know your kids, they know your dog, and we do sampling at the truck, so you get that as well. <laughs> What's your favorite head count? Uh, can you decide what you want while you're walking around the store and just with an app? And just like like a Whole Foods or something? If you're walking around if Whole Foods? If you're walking around saying, oh, you know, I can go for some Jamaican beef stuff. Well, so anybody can use meal planning, whether you, you're a Relay Foods customer or not. It's a free service. And we have, you know, we're thinking there may be ways to integrate with all sorts of things in the future. Um, so yes, you can be walking around the store and do your shopping using meal planning. We do not currently integrate with any other grocers. This is a service in terms of fulfillment that's only attached to relay foods. So what's your ask? Why are you here? Just to show ah, us. so our ask we can get there. is uh, if you want to 
of the things we've learned from meal planning is that Relay as a fulfillment service is a great platform that you can build some pretty cool things on top of, meal planning being one of those things. So we are kind of interested in opening it up for, for other people to integrate with Relay and kind of see where that goes. What do you think that makes you different from your competitors thinking about Amazon for Asia? Sure, so uh, one is that we focus on local and uh, organic food and we just have a long history. We've got six years of experience dealing with local producers. It's something that Amazon has tried to copy and done a really poor job at. So we believe that we're going to be able to hold a long-term niche that's built around being the healthy online grocer. Amazon can have the, you know, the basic consumer Kroger marketplace, and we're going to take the place of Whole Foods. And there are other things, but that's, that's kind of one big thing. This meal planning thing is another thing. There's nobody else that's doing anything remotely as powerful as what we're doing planning right now. So have you thought about partnering with uh, Whole Foods and uh, just basically be able to provide a truck, they do their shopping and then uh, the trucks pick up their stuff at Whole Foods and, and deliver? Definitely yeah. thought about it and who knows what may happen in the future. Can you um, control for or, or configure either nutrient specification or your um, or uh, your, your allergens, things like that? Uh, yeah, so we do allergens pretty well right now. You can filter all of your meals to be gluten-free or paleo or by various dietary restrictions. Um, that will get better in the future so that down to the very ingredient, we will not show you ingredients that include gluten in them even, that kind of a thing. Um, and, and in terms of nutrients, we do a good job at the product level. We've got a really pretty cool intuitive nutrient interface for anything that has a U of PC on it, um, which isn't everything in the catalog because, you know, Farmer Bob Squash doesn't have a U of PC on it. Um, and that's something that, you know, we launched this a few weeks ago, but we definitely plan to integrate into meal planning. The meal planning service is in terms of being able to do your meal planning and import recipes from all around the web and have a personalized kind of list of meals. The fulfillment service is not. I'm, I moved here because my beautiful girlfriend over there started a PhD program, and so I'm actually the only person with Relay in Ann Arbor. How many uh, continuous quarters of profitability have you had? I can't tell you that. It seems really cool. Have you learned anything cool um, differently about how people choose meals rather than how they choose ingredients? I mean, do people come <coughs> to shop and like, um, certain cuisines or do people buy certain kinds of meals? I mean, there's, there's so much stuff on there. How am I going to find something? Yeah, so we've absolutely learned. So our primary demographic is busy families, oftentimes with kids, um, sometimes not, sometimes just married folks. Um, we serve other demographics as well, but that's the primary one. And absolutely, people want quick cooking, 30 minutes or less, affordable dishes. That's why we target about $5 per serving, um, 5 to $6 per serving. And um, so quick cooking, affordable, and seasonal. Our customers like local food, so seasonal means local in most cases. Um, that all right, that's it. I'll be around. <laughs>